there's a lot of enthusiasm around uh, DMD gene therapy clinical trials, and there were several symposia dedicated to uh, gene therapy and gene transfer technologies as it relates to Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Um, And these were really exciting to be able to take a look back in history at how far we've come from identifying the dystrophin gene um, to uh, being able to create some natural history data and then utilize that to move forward into an era of therapeutics in addition to symposia that were allowing us to be able to uh, connect the dots over time and look forward to a, a new clinical landscape, there were several posters presented as well regarding gene transfer therapies for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So one of the poster presentations uh, was regarding the IGNITE DMD study, and this was a study of SGT001 microdystrophin gene therapy. Uh, that's being evaluated for the treatment of Duchenne muscular dystrophy as well. And the trial was looking at safety and efficacy. Uh, Overall, the poster described that SGT001 demonstrated stability in motor function, as demonstrated by the six-minute walk test and the North Star ambulatory assessment, demonstrated improved pulmonary function over time, and continued meaningful improvements in patient-reported outcomes as well, as demonstrated by a tool we use called the POD-C. Biopsy data also demonstrated durable microdystrophin expression up to 24 months. In addition to the Ignite DMD poster that was uh, shared, um, there was another poster dedicated to RGX202, which is an investigational AAV8 gene therapy coding for a novel microdystrophin as a treatment for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And this shared some data regarding the preclinical um, MDX mice models uh, utilizing this technique, this therapy. And uh, there was a dose proportional increase of vector DNA and RGX202 microdystrophin protein noted in skeletal muscles of MDX mice 12 weeks after administration. So the Affinity Duchenne clinical trial has been designed uh, based on this, and this will be evaluated in six patients, ages 4 to 11, who are ambulatory, and expansion uh, might eventually permit up to 18 participants in the study, so we can look forward to that. Furthermore, uh, there was a uh, poster presentation for the one-year data from the Endeavor clinical trial which was a phase 1b clinical trial of dolendistrogen moxaparvavec in boys with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And cohort 1 of this particular clinical trial included boys ages 4 to 7, and this group was analyzed over this one-year time period. And uh, what was demonstrated was improvement in timed function tests that um, were able to be compared to an external control comparator group and, um, and there was a significant difference between those treated and that external control group. So that's very encouraging as well for this um, therapeutic. Uh, I was actually able to present a poster on the integrated analysis of data from the clinical trials of dolendistrogen moxaparvavec in Duchenne muscular dystrophy as well. And uh, this uh, analyzed the um, clinical studies from Uh, 101, 102, um, and study 103, uh, and evaluated this um, intervention uh, compared to, once again, an external comparator cohort. And and what was demonstrated was a significant difference uh, and improvement in uh, timed function tests um, and other functional data from boys who received the target dose of dolendistrogen moxaparvavec. Safety was also evaluated, and the most common treatment-related adverse effects included vomiting, decreased appetite, um, and nausea, and this has been consistent across these clinical trials. Uh, So looking forward to overall um, more therapeutics as we um, move forward in this really exciting realm of gene transfer therapy for boys with DMD. (music) 